The Great Barrier Reef is one of nature's true wonders, populated by creatures and corals so fascinating that one world champion free diver has crossed the globe to experience it all in her own unique way, on one breath of air. Hi, I'm Marina, Marina Kazankova, world champion free diver, actress and psychologist. And I'm here to show you all the wonders of the Great Barrier Reef. Marina Kazankova, a world champion free diver twice over, has dived the world's most exotic oceans. And now she's using her extraordinary talents to undertake a series of challenges on the Barrier Reef. Challenges such as swimming with a giant groper. Wonderful. Free diving. The Barrier Reef is so large, stretching as it does down much of Australia's east coast, that it's visible from outer space, the only living thing that achieves that honour. For a free diver, this spectacular natural creation provides a real challenge. I have had the honour of winning two World Free Diving Championships. And now I want to use this talent to explore the largest living structure on the planet the Great Barrier Reef. Not too many people can hold their breath for seven minutes. Marina Cousin Cova certainly can. And she achieves this through meditation and a strict set of exercises to strengthen her mind and body. Exercises she's been working hard at every day since her champion freediving father taught her as a very young girl. With one breath of air, she free dives on some of the 1,500 different species of fish that have been identified on the reef. From tiny blue damsels making their home in surface corals, to schools of big eye trevally swimming in tight formation. Here's one species that has Marina intrigued, the giant Queensland groper. It's my first groper experience. It's five times the size of an average man. Marina is dwarfed alongside it. Oh, first I saw a big, big fish, like so huge, it was bigger than me. I was scared, I think, oh, I won't swim with that big guy. <laughs> and then I came down slowly and I felt that he had a nice energy. He was not aggressive and he didn't care about me. And I came closer and I swam with it. And I felt that we are the same, we are creatures of nature together. And it's such a wonderful experience. I will never forget that. Home for all these creatures are the coral formations created by some 350 different types of tiny coral polyps. And what I love most is going deep, deep, deep down and then 
coming up through the hole of the coral, seeing all that colors and the fish, tropical fish around. Then there are the clams, with their vivid colors. Some clams grow for more than 100 years, and when they finally die, their shell has grown so big that Marina can hide inside it. These giant clams are becoming extinct in many areas. Their populations are diminishing rapidly. Over history, one friend and foe of the Great Barrier Reef is global warming. 15,000 years ago, the reef grew prolifically, spurred by the last great surge of global temperatures that saw sea levels rise dramatically. Today, as temperatures rise yet again, marine biologists like Gemma Simpson are keeping a close eye on the reef. Today I'm looking for things like clams, I'm looking for certain fish. I take a record of bleaching, of damage, of any disease, and then we report back to the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority. So what's the state of the reef now? It's looking quite good at the moment. I'm keeping an eye on it. It's absolutely beautiful. The fish have just been coming in in huge numbers recently, so it's all very exciting. Gemma takes Marina on one of her observational swims and her initial assessment is positive. The coral is looking healthy. It's thriving at the moment. But rising temperatures are still of real concern. We are a bit concerned about it this year. Uh, we have El Nino, a weather system coming through which brings us even warmer water. We are expected to exceed 31 degrees this year. That is the temperature where most of our coral will bleach, which is probably what is the most concerning at the moment. As we'll experience shortly, coral is a life form that is amazingly resilient, with coral polyps determined to survive. That evening, a very special phenomenon, triggered by the full moon in early summer, the annual spawning of the coral. Nighttime sees a fresh burst of life and action, like thick schools of baitfish snapping at the coral spawn. What you're witnessing is a feeding frenzy. <laughs> the fish came here and it jumped all on me. <laughs> it's fantastic. Baitfish gorging on fresh coral spawn, themselves being attacked and eaten by hungry trevally. The ocean is so alive. The baitfish are here and they come every evening. They love the light. They're attracted by the light like the butterflies. And they attract big fish <laughs> that come to eat it and it's like evening theater of the fish. And the krill is everywhere, and they're climbing on my wetsuit, and I feel the part of the ocean. <laughs> this is amazing. Diving deep, Marina passes through clouds of coral spawn. She's on the hunt to find their source. En route, this night dive reveals a coral reef very different from its daytime face. So the ocean seems a night rainbow. And you see new creatures, and you see new life, and it seems to be in the fairy tale. When I see this big, big, huge belder coral, it seems like scenery from the moon, and the color is close to the moon. Here's a parrotfish deep in slumber. A colorful crab, and a coral shrimp crawling effortlessly. It is not scared by me. <laughs> and I'm certainly, <laughs> I'm not scared by it. I'm fascinated by it, but it's, by its colors, and it's touching me with its feelers, and it's so, so gentle and so nice. But watch out for that highly decorative lionfish. Its fin spines are venomous. It's very poisonous, because it was protects itself. A really painful sting. Ahead, Marina spots the wonder that is the natural spawning of the coral. The barrier reef is regenerating in spectacular form. It's a miracle, and it's like vertical rain. Spawn is going up to the surface. It's truly beautiful. It's a true spectacle. The beauty of this is that each kind of coral has its own color, 
And we have here red and orange and yellow and green, all the colors of the rainbow. Different types of corals are spawning in different time. The coral that Marina has found spawning is a tiny finger coral. Little tiny yellow eggs are going from inside out, like floating and going in the ocean to form new corals. I was like looking inside that finger coral and seeing a miracle. The miracle of the hardy reef stretches through the night. An awesome display of mother nature held bent on surviving, no matter how big the threat. Sunrise sees Marina paddling into the pontoon from where she's undertaking her first barrier reef challenges. It's the size of an Olympic swimming pool tethered to the Hardy Reef, a three-hour boat trip off the Whitsunday coast. Plenty of space to exercise, to get into physical and mental shape for the vigorous free diving challenges ahead. Pontoon life means she can check out the fish life on the underwater observatory. Or get to know the thousands of whitecap noddies that have made this their resting place. Or hop into an Aussie swag for a night out under the stars. From the pontoon, Marina travels out to a coral formation that has won acclaim for its natural shape. I love all the coral formations on the Great Barrier Reef, but this one is really special. From the heart of nature, a perfect sign of love. Take a look at what Mother Nature has created. What nature has created is a collection of coral that is shaped like a heart. Welcome to the Heart Reef. Couples from all over the world come here to propose to be engaged and share their love with each other. Tourists now fly out here by seaplane to witness this unique formation. But very few people have actually swum here, let alone around it, not to mention underwater. I feel so much energy of love here that I want to free dive around the heart reef on one breath. Oh. Marina begins what is a world first. The first person to ever swim entirely around the heart reef without surfacing for air. It's a challenge that Marina undertakes calmly. Free diving is more than a sport. It's an art, a lifestyle, involving meditation, harmony and awareness. That's a discipline that Marina has mastered superbly. Any wonder she's a current world title holder twice over. But not only does she swim around the reef outside, she's straight back at it to swim the inner perimeter. Whew. That's around the reef. Now I want to do it inside the reef. Let's go. Again, Marina masters the challenge with a paradies, but it is still arduous, strengthening her for longer and more rigorous free dives further along the reef. Every day, Marina takes long underwater swims to improve her performance, at the same time coming face to face with an abundance of creatures, like the cuttlefish. Despite that name, they are not fish, they are mollusks. Watch them lay their eggs. They are secreting them into the coral, hiding them to give greater protection. This cuttlefish is laying hundreds of eggs at a time, leaving them for three to five months when they'll hatch. Another intriguing creature, the sea anemone. These anemones are carnivorous predators. Watch as they use their tentacles to reach out and catch.
They are really good at avoiding predators, swimming fast and on the ocean floor, or watch them bury themselves right down under the sand. But their most awesome performance is when they get together. The ritual of courtship and mating allows plenty of latitude when you combine two sets of eight tentacles. The male octopus has a specialized arm it's using to transfer its packets of sperm to the female's mantle cavity. Sadly, male octopus die within months of mating, while the female goes on to lay up to 200,000 eggs. One more challenge on the Hardy Reef, a horizontal waterfall. Here we are at the phenomenon of the nature, horizontal waterfall. The trick is when the tide goes low, there are only tiny channels that the water can pass through and that's why you can see the difference of the height. Over there it's higher and over here it's lower. And I want to explore how can you feel passing this waterfall from the top to the bottom in free diving. Travelling up into the Coral Dam gives us an idea of the force of the water flowing out. My plan is to free dive inside the waterfall, to hold my breath for several minutes and to swim like a dolphin, like a fish, flying in the water. A final check of mask and fins. And Marina is in the water, seemingly at the mercy of this fast flowing current. This falling tide is especially big now, at the time of the full moon. And into the channel she goes, jet blasted along by a very powerful surge. I see the coral rushing past me at a very high speed. And it is so amazing just to be carried with this strength of the ocean. For me, it's the best roller coaster I ever experienced. At the end of the ride, an even more turbulent set of cross currents. At the end of the waterfall, there are a lot of eddies that spin me around and I feel like being in the washing machine. Not satisfied with going down the falls, Marina wants to go upstream. I have a challenge. I want to swim on the opposite way of the waterfall. Like, I want to climb up the waterfall. And I try, I'm trying to do that. I'm just swimming and swimming and swimming and I'm just feeling to go back and this power of the water is much bigger than me and it's so amazing. No way she can do it. She's clearly beaten this time. But still in the mood for more challenges further south on the Greatest Reef. From the Hardy Reef, we're travelling south, way south, down the Barrier Reef. Our transport is the Tasman Venture, a giant catamaran capable of handling the big seas that pound the reef. There's a journey of almost a thousand kilometres from the Hardy Reef to the southernmost end of the Barrier Reef, with a series of coral caves and reefs en route. This gives Marina an opportunity to go ashore to explore. And what she finds are birds, millions of seabirds. With so much fish to catch, bird life on the reef is truly prolific. The brown booby colonies are teeming. These boobies are ground nesters. And today Marina finds the ground thick with mothers nesting on eggs. But watch out for the marauding silver gulls. Eggs left unprotected, a fair game as the gulls move in for a quick kill. Those eggs that do hatch result in fluffy white newborn chicks. And they're surprisingly aggressive from birth. First born chicks generally eject any other chicks from their nest. Bridal terns are another species in proliferation here. This mother makes sure her egg is well protected while the newborn chick stays very close to her mum. But it's these birds on one coral cay that have Marina worried. White cap notice. 
owl trapped in the in the seeds of this tree. Oh, there are lots of these birds trapped in the seeds. I need to help them. If not, they, they will die. But many noddies have already died. It's too late for these birds. Unfortunately, I can't save all the birds of the island. But today, it'll be my mission to try to save as much as I can. One by one, Marina painstakingly unpicks the sticky seed pods from their feathers. Even though the birds can no longer fly, many have been kept alive by mothers feeding them. And the pure joy of such a rescue mission is to finally release them. Bye-bye, little bird, and fly. Into the water yet again, this time for a night dive. And what about this, a colony of predatory plankton? It looks like a strange jellyfish. In fact, it's many smaller creatures working together, moving and hunting. Then there's the parrotfish, determined to have a safe sleep. This parrotfish has created its own protective net of mucus. It's a cocoon that completely envelops the fish. The lionfish are very active at night, striking out at smaller prey with lightning speed. One night stalker that plays very safe is the epaulette shark. We observed this specimen moving long distances. It looks like it's attached to the ocean floor. Mastering the night has indeed forged many unique life forms, refined senses and specialised survival skills. A very dark, intense and precarious world where marine creatures spent half their lives and where they evolved. Another discovery here are the tracks of turtles. Perfect timing. We're at the beginning of the turtle nesting season here. Turtles, both loggerheads and greens, make these coral caves their nesting grounds. The plan is to come back tonight and to watch some 30 to 40 turtles come here ashore to lay their eggs. And right now, I'm going to swim with smaller turtles. Before they come ashore, Marina encounters the turtles in their natural playground, the ocean. Turtles are my favorite animals ever. And today I had a fantastic experience to swim with a green turtle. And she was so friendly that I could stay so close. Like, it seemed to me that we were 
hand by hand with her <laughs> and we were swimming around each other and I was moving my arms like her flippers and it seemed to me that we were flying together in the ocean. And it's a beautiful experience to do this with one of nature's creatures. And we swim and swim and swim. And it seemed to me that we swim for ages. And we were one, like two creatures like one. Late that afternoon, the first turtle starts coming ashore. They're cumbersome creatures on land, struggling up coral beaches to find softer sand in which to dig their nest. It's well and truly dark by the time they're laying their eggs. We have a miracle here. A marine turtle laying her eggs. It takes her hours to come from the sea to dig the hole, the nest and then to lay 200 eggs and only one in a thousand will survive and become an adult. As Marina watches, a bridal turn returns to what was once her nest, only to find a very much larger creature has taken her place. Jump on its back she may, no way that turtle is going to move. There follows the process of scraping sand back over her eggs. And then it's seaward bound. It's a very difficult process for it turtle, quite a struggle, to come from the ocean, to pass all this coral and the sandy beach, to lay her eggs and then to make all the way back. And she does it three, four times in a season. We can see tears at her eyes. Months later, the real miracle of turtle evolution. They've waited for cooler temperatures, usually at night time, and then from their protective sandy incubation nest, the turtle hatchlings have broken out of their eggs and are clambering out into the world. One by one they emerge, struggling out of their sandy nest onto the beach. And the direction they all head in? Straight towards the water. The temperature in their nest determines what sex these turtles will become. Warmer temperatures will produce females, cooler temperatures males. It's a coordinated team effort, resembling an army as they move en masse across the beach. And as they enter the water, they'll swim furiously out to sea to avoid predators, sometimes disappearing to places unknown for up to 10 years before returning to coastal areas. Other turtles are emerging in the day. It's a far more dangerous environment now. And sure enough, a silver gull flies eerily close, looking for a sure catch. Apart from those predatory seagulls, they face even bigger challenges in the sea. Crabs and fish will take out most of them. Any wonder only one in a thousand survive. Our journey along the greatest reef brings us to the biggest challenges of this trip, around a coral cay known as Lady Elliot Island.
marina explores its lagoon, rich in corals and starfish. Hard to believe this all emerged from the seabed only some three and a half thousand years ago. On shore, a nature lover's paradise, with bird life more diverse here than anywhere else on the reef. Bird droppings were once so thick that miners stripped a metre of guano from the island surface 150 years ago. Below the waves, marina encounters manta rays. Feeding on plankton at the surface, she's able to get surprisingly close to these ballerinas of the deep. What a performance the mantas are putting on. They are chain feeding on plankton and keep coming back time and again to the same point. They are swooping and gliding and passing so close to our cameras. This one actually connected. Whilst there's an abundance of mantas off Lady Elliot Island today, they are listed as a vulnerable species. Their demise from commercial fishing off Asia exacerbated by a very slow reproductive rate. Further south, in an enchanting collection of reefs known as the Coral Gardens, she swims within touching distance of sharks. They're certainly not aggressive, these whitecap reef sharks, more inclined to swim away than approach her. Deep below the surface off Lady Elliot Island, a reminder of the treachery of these waters. A two-masted yacht, the Severance, sank here in a storm in 1999, with its hull, spar and rigging still intact. Lying at 21 metres, this is a shipwreck that Marina has long wanted to free dive. Marina's support team goes through all contingencies ahead of her dive. And you're going to be able to use the sea scooter to get down there much quicker. It's going to give you good speed getting down to the wreck. So take it nice and easy for our cameras and then have fun. It'll be a little challenge for me, but I think I'll use the underwater scooter. So it'll be only fun swimming in the current with the scooter and looking for the fish and for the wreck. Just chilling out. Marina's latest transport can zoom her along at five knots but she has to take care with equalizing safely. It's very important not to go too fast, because if you're going too fast, you can have problems with your equalization. So you should regulate the speed of the scooter with your ears to equalize them properly. That said, Marina soars through the water with a new transport. And what she encounters, those 21 meters down, is a wreck in surprisingly good shape. The hull largely undamaged, and those riggings living in that rack. Uh, they are well protected under because no one is going inside and they can go up and, and find some food and then come back. For Marina, this has been a very satisfying challenge. This wreck in freedive is the nicest wreck I've ever seen in freediving. The wreck dive has wet Marina's appetite for the biggest challenge of this trip, to swim free and ever so deep like the schools of fish that abound here, 
through an awesome cave known as the Blowhole. Free diving can be extremely dangerous. Free divers have died and Marina makes us all aware of the danger signs. I wanted to say about a free diver's blackout, just in case. Uh, first, before the uh, blackout, starts uh, stra strange uh, movements of the body, unconscious movements. Yep. It just no. grab me and take me up. If this phase passes, uh, starts blackout, just the person relax totally and doesn't breathe. Uh, the first thing to do is to take uh, off the mask and to blow in the face. If it's not that, uh, so you need to make uh, the artificial breathing. Yeah. The team of safety divers are well aware of the dangers and are thoroughly prepared to handle any emergency. We're going to have safety divers uh, following you down on the very first dive and you'll be coming out at 21 metres. So you'll have a safety diver coming down behind you and you'll have a safety diver waiting out uh, 21 metres. The safety divers accompany Marina out to the dive site, ready to help if anything goes wrong. Lady Elliot Island behind us. It's a wonderful place and it offers me a great challenge. Cave diving, my favourite. It's a wonderful challenge and I feel really relaxed and ready. This cave is considered a favourite for divers with scuba tanks. But free diving, well that's a completely different challenge. It's big circular entry point, 14 metres down. And further on, the exit, 21 metres. Marina says she's thoroughly psyched and prepared to try it. To prepare for a challenge like that, you need breathing exercises, stretching, workouts, and especially you need your mental work, because it's all about uh, how do you feel down in the dark water and when you don't see the exit. Sure, there are dangerous elements to this, but if I'm psychologically safe with myself and with the ocean, everything will be okay. Marina has donned her world championship winning gold wetsuit for today's challenge. And in she goes. First, it's back to the surface for the final preparation. And then down she goes on that single breath of air. First, I've made a dive going down and I saw a turtle. It's a very good sign for me. Turtles are my favorite animals. Down, down Marina swims effortlessly totally focused on that cave ahead. It was a wonderful challenge, you know. When I entered that cave, it was pretty dark and there were so many fish around in a miracle place. I love it so much. Not only is Marina remaining superbly calm, she even takes time to engage in a series of ballerina-style pirouettes. Such poise under enormous physical pressure. And what is she thinking at this very second? I work with my mind not to think about breathing, you know, to think about the air, but just to be, to be in the moment, to feel the life right in that moment. And then I felt that I didn't have enough breath and I come down and to the exit and went up to the light, to the sun, spinning around and feeling how the water is passing through my face and then up to the air. Marina has avoided a blackout and triumphed even finding enough air for a few modest, heartfelt words about her amazing achievement. Oh, wonderful. I love it. Yahoo! One final challenge for Marina. It begins quietly enough as she paddles a kayak in calm seas off Lady Elliot Island. And then, right in front of her, the outline of an extremely big creature. A whale shark! A big whale shark! I'm going in! 
on go her fins and in she goes. And there it is, right in front of her, the world's biggest fish, a whale shark. A gigantic filter feeder that's swimming right towards her. At first, the whale shark swims shallow, only two or so metres deep. And Marina free dives right up close to it, over and over again. This creature lives on plankton and small fish. And no need to worry about being bitten, because this is a shark with no teeth. It was not at all frightened by me. And we swim together, and it doesn't want to go away. It seems like painted. It was all black, and with that big, whitish, yellowish marks everywhere. What is truly remarkable about this encounter is that whale sharks are very rare on the reef. This is only the second time in recorded history that one has been spotted off Lady Iliadanum. It seemed that it wanted to have the contact with me. I was swimming so close to it and I felt, I felt protected. For over an hour, this giant of the deep swims around and around Marina, taking its time ever so gracefully. I went down, I swam with the whale shark, then I went up to take my air and I straight back down to swim together again. And I wasn't scared of it at all. I was curious from the first moment and I felt its wonderful energy, the energy of peace and of relaxation. At long last, the whale shark makes a slow exit. For Marina Cousin Koba, world champion free diver, this has been an extraordinary encounter. Like so sweet, so tender. Oh, it's the best gift of this adventure. Sadly, there's no escaping the reality that rising temperatures are threatening to bleach corals all over the world. But as Marina has discovered, the Great Barrier Reef is a true survivor. I've witnessed the natural wonder that is the annual spawning of the coral. Vast clouds of spawn and eggs that are building new reefs. All very positive signs that the reef will not only survive, but thrive.